so in the mid 2000s, the uh, new seals they would graduate buds and then they would go to seal qualification training uh, right next door. And when they graduated that, they would be pinned with their trident and fully fledged uh, qualified seals. The other thing they started to give them, and I think it's just a, a, a great idea, I wish I'd have been part of it, is they would give them a K-Bar knife engraved with their class number and the name of a fallen frogman, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, SEAL type of stuff. It's just a part of who you are. This is your heritage. K-Bar knives reached out to me, and they have a guy that is requesting a replacement knife that he lost in a move. The problem with it is uh, his name is not listed, and he says he graduated class 50. And class 50 graduated in, it was actually two classes, uh, one on the East Coast. The one in uh, Little Creek, Virginia graduated uh, uh, December 1970, and the one in Coronado was May of 1969. You know, well, there's a problem with that because they weren't doing that back then. And uh, K-Bar caught this thing, and uh, they're asking him what happened to it. He said he lost it in a move. And uh, I've done a number of videos on this guy that uh, he is, uh, says was engraved on his knife. And that was uh, Howard Roeder, UDT-10. He was a prisoner of war on Yap Island, and I've done this. They locked out of that, uh, got off of that submarine, went into Yap Island. Unfortunately, three of them were uh, uh, captured, executed, and uh, Roeder was one of them. Tragic. Absolutely tragic. They could not find the submarine. When they came off of the beach during their reconnaissance, they could not find the submarine. So I'm going to call this moron and see what his problem is, and uh, we'll see what he does. So there you have it. James George. Hello, James. Yes. Yeah, I understand you're having trouble replacing a K-Bar knife. So, uh, how are you today? I am. I'm, I'm fine, thanks. Well, thanks, thanks for your service. So, uh, how long ago uh, did you go through training, sir? What did uh, I saw the engraving on there? Where did you uh, serve, sir? Oh, I served in Vietnam, and then uh, I, well, over the years, I served a lot of places. But uh, my first combat uh, deployment was to uh, Vietnam, and, uh, and then subsequent to that, I've been, well, I've been in, in uh, the Balkans, and I've been uh, I got activated for uh, Desert Storm after I retired. So it's, 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 I've had a number of deployments over the years to Bahrain and uh, South America, Central America, so quite a few theaters. Well, I think they call that trigger time. <laughs> Sounds like you've got a bit of trigger time. I, well, I've had a number of times I did. Yeah. Although, you know, in, in UDTs, we didn't, uh, people are there because they, they, they did, uh, um, everybody went through the same same training, but then SEALs stayed down and did additional training. So I was with the UDT team, uh, so I wasn't SEAL qualified, I was just a UDT combat swimmer. So we didn't do, we didn't do a lot of jungle ambush type stuff. We did personnel recovery, we did clearance, we did surveillance, we did, uh, you know, did the, we had a lot of different things, uh, you know, particularly in Vietnam. Uh, so it was a, a different mission set for, for most of the UDT teams. How long did you serve for? I served for a total, total of 23 years. I'm sorry, sir? 23. Oh, how about that? That's fantastic, fantastic. And served all that time in, uh, in underwater demolition? No, I moved over to uh, um, uh, very shallow water mine color layers. And uh, uh, most of the guys from UDT went over to CDV, uh, sealed delivery vehicles. And, uh, uh, and uh, I, had, I had had a TDI over in Vietnam, and the docs would clear me for 
the kind of depths that you you uh, you have to operate at uh, with single delivery vehicles. And what training? What coast was your training conducted on? The West Coast. Coronado. Yeah. Okay. And your training class was fifty. Wow. Okay. And uh, do you remember when that class graduated, sir? Uh, we graduated in 1970. Uh, it was July of 1970. That's a, that was a while ago. That's before my time. So, um, yeah, so, well, thank you, thank you. I, a, lot of, uh, a lot of history there, I guess. So, uh, fantastic, sir. And they, uh, they put the name of, uh, who was this uh, guy that the, the knife was engraved with? He was a UDT guy, served on, as I recall, uh, SEAL Team 1 and then two of the UDTs. I think he was, on, he was on 10 and 11. And he was killed on the, well, actually he was captured on the island of Yap. And um, his actual date of death is, uh, they know the date that he was captured, but they don't know when he actually died. He died in captivity. His body was never recovered. And he was also a SEAL on SEAL Team 1? Well, I thought they got their start much later than that. Well, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they started in the 60s, but, but uh, I, I could be wrong about that. I'd have to, I'd have to look at it. Um, I'd think about it again. But I know he was with 10 and 11, UDT 10 and 11. He couldn't possibly have been with SEALs now that I think about it. I don't know why I was thinking that. Um, because it's, it's the teams didn't, SEAL teams didn't come in until the middle 60s. So like 63, I think, was when they started those. Great, uh, sir. They I think that the part of the confusion with that was that the uh, K bar had only recently started uh, issuing knives that were engraved in the uh, mid two thousands. Know, they gave you one at your graduation in UDT. Yeah, gave that to all those guys a K bar that was engraved. I, I don't know. But the graduation, the everybody got one? Yeah. I'll be doggone. I'm looking at the, the database here for uh, all the guys that graduated class 50. That class actually graduated on 9 May 1969 in, in Coronado. Okay. I think you said it was 70. Was that uh, kind of a mistake? What what happened on that thing? How did you get a TBI? Must have been, there's a good story behind that. Well, the only, only extent that, that I was around some just demo went off and uh, um, I got got hit in the head and uh, um, just had a traumatic brain injury, lost consciousness, was in the hospital for a fair amount of time. I get it. I get it, sir. No, I'm not. Uh, I see the uh, names of everybody up here that graduated that, but I'm not seeing your name listed under that. Would there be some kind of mistake? Don't know. Hmm. Yeah, we're not uh, not quite seeing that, sir. Can you name a, a couple of guys that you went through training with? What was your? Uh, I'll tell you what. But, uh, what was your first team assignment, sir? UDT thirteen. UDT thirteen. Uh, and how long were you there, sir? Well, UDT with with counter measures and an ag, and that was after uh, we went through. Uh, we went to. To, uh, to Vietnam, uh, it was uh, in short under the uh, countermeasures. Uh, in, in yeah, well, would you remember who your commanding officer was? Milton was his last name. What was it, sir? Milton, M I L T O N. 
No, I'm not seeing anybody named Milton uh, listed as ever being a SEAL or underwater demolition team guy. I'm sorry, sir? He was not a SEAL officer. Well, what was he, sir? I think he was just a line officer. And he was commanding an underwater demolition team? No, he was commanding the inshore and undersea. Uh, oh, well, security unit. You remember anybody from your first underwater demolition team? The name of uh, an actual UDT guy or SEAL? Yeah. Well, our, we had a, a chief warrant officer. Uh, uh, everyone called him Brad. I'm trying to remember his last name. Sir, I'm, I'm just not seeing any of this. Uh, the whole Vietnam thing, the whole TBI, the whole knife thing. Sir, are you just kind of stretching this a little bit, uh, stretching this a little uh, thin rope-wise with this claim? Again, they, they never started giving those knives out uh, during that time frame, uh, sir. Okay. So are you kind of making this up? Are you kind of making this up, sir? So you actually served in underwater demolition and SEAL team? Because I'm, I'm not seeing anything under your class. Uh, you can't name any of the guys in it. You can't name anybody you went kind of through training with. Well, I don't blame you for that. I can't remember either. But I could. You said you served all the way up through the Balkans and. Everything else, I, I spent 24 years in the Navy. Team one, team two, I could rip off half my buds class easy. But uh, I think you're struggling there with that. And, uh, well, I told you that I, I moved on to, to EOD type work. Oh, EOD so, type work. Yeah. But you graduated class 50. You couldn't get the, uh, the date right. And they weren't giving those knives out back then, sir. This is a new phenomenon. It makes you kind of wonder, you know, my son got one when he graduated SEAL training as a young guy, but I don't, uh, they weren't giving them out back then. It kind of makes me think you were doing some reading on the internet and saw that. Now, I know uh, who that UDT guy was that uh, was captured on Yap Island and executed. I know the whole story. But, uh, he was never a SEAL, underwater demolition team guy. No, he was with 10 and 11, as I recall. Yeah, but you weren't around at that point, sir, so you're reading and gathering all this information, right? You raised some you raised some red flags, sir. You raised some red flags at the K Bar group when you asked for that because they know that uh, they weren't issuing and, and doing those knives. This is a recent thing of heritage and you know, the guys that uh, went before these younger SEALs. They weren't doing it in 1970, sir. Okay, so you're not with KBAR. No, I was forwarded this email for uh, verification because they want to be real careful. It's like a, a, a group that makes rings for SEAL team. Oftentimes, guys will say uh, the same thing you did to get a SEAL ring, and they're very careful of where they go because they don't want them used uh, for a, a purpose that they weren't intended to that somebody would have a knife like that, display it, and tell all their neighbors and family, see, here's this knife, this means I did graduate that training. Now, I'll help you with any of this, sir, but I'm not seeing any name up here. Uh, you know, we're talking about Milton, uh, you know, and, uh, a line officer. I mean, you should be able to rip off a, uh, a, a bunch of people, but uh, I'll, I'll try it any way you want. Tell you is that I don't remember a lot. Okay. Well, yeah. All right. Anything else? No, not really. Okay, sir. I'd, I'd, I'd ease up on those claims you're taking from guys that actually did that training, and uh, I was certainly one of them. So. All right. Good what enough. Year did you graduate? What's that? What year did you graduate? 85. Okay. So considerably after. Believe me, the training changed a lot. Oh, listen to me, sir. I am a walking historian on naval special warfare. I can't tell you how many guys got hurt in explosions and got TBIs. My name's Don Shipley, sir. I'm that guy that verifies all these SEAL claims. 
I know everything that went on in our 77 year history. And I know none of that happened. And I, I can see the date that class 50 graduated. And you were way off on that too. And you can't, sir, you can't give me a name. I'm looking at the old database, sir. 77 year history of guys that went through. And your name was not listed uh, up there as ever serving in Naval Special Warfare, period. So do you want to try with any kind of uh, name or something, uh, a commanding officer, some way to prove that you did this? Because, you know, what happened is you tried to get that knife, and they knew they weren't issuing them back then. This is a very new thing. Over the past 10, 15 years, they started doing that. Okay? Thanks. Yeah, I'll see you. I get some of that shit as well. Uh, it's always a, a, an explosion, a demolition thing. I've done more demolition than most SEALs ever thought about doing. And uh, I've rattled my brain before only because when I wanted to and the guy's next close. But the, the guy's hurt from demolitions, you know, and I got hit with something. Okay, dude, give me a break. But uh, no, none of this. All Vietnam and the UDT and then he's in the Balkans. That happened uh, in the 90s. You know, so from 70, 80, 90s, you know, and he's all in. He just doesn't know what he's, the hell he's talking about. Then he goes into EOD and all that stuff. And so that is uh, typical. I know you guys have heard that on here before. Uh, what year did you go through training? And then they try to make me out to be the new guy. You know, like, I don't know what I'm talking about. And you'd be wrong about that. So. <laughs> See ya. These guys, man, especially these old ones. That's exactly what he was going to do. Hang it on the wall and tell everybody to come in, see, here's proof. They just sent me this engraved knife. We all got them. He didn't even know if they all got them in his training class because he didn't do it. See ya.